Hi guys, Michał here from GarageRam.net. In this tutorial I will show you how to optimize bucket settings in V-Ray. I will test various bucket settings and check which ones give the best render time and RAM usage. Also I will check a very frequent issue which I think we all know which is the last hanging bucket. So I will show you some ways how to check why it happens and how to get rid of it at all or at least how to minimize its effect on render time. I will run tests of various bucket sizes, proportions and different rendering bucket sequences so you can choose the most efficient scene settings. This is the testing setup I am going to use. The hardware is as on the table. I am going to use 3ds Max 2017 and V-Ray 4.1. In V-Ray settings I am going to use GI set to brute force plus brute force and dynamic memory limit set to 100GB. The other settings are set to high values on purpose to get longer render times. So small variations in render time will not affect the result of the tests. Here are the scenes I prepared for testing. I have two full HD scenes which we can consider as frames of animations. One is an interior scene and one is an exterior scene. The other two are set to 6K resolution so we can treat them as still images. One of them is a very simple landscape scene with displacement applied and the second one is a random collection of trees set up as instanced V-Ray proxies and some displacement terrain. I I chose the interior and exterior scenes as example of typical scenarios, so I could see if the test results are similar in various situations. The scene with trees is going to use dynamic memory because of proxies, and the terrain scene has 3D mapping displacement applied set to static geometry. So I hope I covered all possible setups. First I will explain very shortly what is Bucket Image Sampler in V-Ray. V-Ray offers progressive and bucket rendering. In bucket rendering, V-Ray subdivides the image into rectangular sections, which are called buckets. The buckets render the image piece after piece in a given order, and you get one bucket for every core or thread of the processors you are using for rendering. Every bucket or core starts rendering from getting the scene data stored in the computer's memory or, if necessary, loading it from the hard drive and then calculates its parts of the image. After all the buckets are calculated, the final image is put together and saved in a specific format. Now I will test scenes set with various bucket sizes and check how these settings affect rendering time and RAM usage. Here are the results of my tests. As you can see, the general tendency is that as the buckets get smaller, the render time gets longer and the RAM usage declines. The 1 pixel and 2 pixel buckets prove to be useless. They generated huge render times, so I didn't even add them to the table. It also concerns 4 pixels bucket size. It gave very long render times for all the scenes. And this is because every bucket has to unload and load the data needed to render its part and make some quick pre-computation before rendering itself. So if the image is divided into lots of small buckets, these small amounts of time add up and they create the difference in render time. That effect is stronger when there is not enough RAM to store the whole scene data and when the bucket moves to render another part of the image but with a different set of objects than the part it just completed. So it has to load new data needed to render the next chunk of the image and it takes additional time. So these small buckets prove to be useless in production rendering, at least when it comes to these four scenes, but you can use them when you render some part of the image with a region rendering and you want to use all your threads to render this part as fast as possible. I tried to set up the render region to 1024 pixels, but the maximum value which V-Ray allowed me to input was 1000 pixels. V-Ray has the dynamic bucket splitting option, which splits buckets to smaller ones as the rendering comes to an end. It's turned on by default. 
In the case of these scenes, that option got turned on instantly. So the scene started to render with buckets already split to 500 pixels. In case of full HD resolution, this is obvious because only two 1000 pixel bucket would fit into the image and I have 20 cores. So potentially I have 20 buckets to render, but for 6K scene, which needs 36 such buckets, it was activated instantly as well. So I didn't expect that. These are the best rendering times I got for all the scenes. In general, bigger buckets rendered faster. In the case of exterior scene, buckets bigger than 48 pixels rendered longer. And this is because some of the big buckets got stuck for longer and they still rendered the image when all other buckets completed rendering. So this is the hanging buckets issue and I will address it later. In the case of the interior scene, we were kind of lucky and there was no problem with the hanging buckets. So the biggest bucket we could use was also the fastest one. I thought that using big buckets would have a bigger impact on rendering scenes in 6K resolution. So to check on it, I ran tests of two scenes in 20K resolution this time to again check the performance of big buckets. The 1000 pixels bucket needed a lot of RAM. In case of the three proxy scene, it even caused the scene to crash. These bucket settings gave the best rendering times. So in case of scenes with such a big resolution, it's good to try to render with bigger buckets. I would say that the safe choice would be 256 pixels in this case, but you can also try 512 pixels. It's good to remember that on cloud render farms, high resolution images are either split to smaller regions, which are then rendered on multiple computers, or they're rendered with network rendering, so they use a lot of buckets, or they are rendered on single nodes without network rendering. So in this case, the rendering looks similar to the local rendering on your computer. And as a side note, such rendering is still a good idea since you can render several images at the same time, on the farm, each on a single node and free your workstation. So this is also an option. So when you render a high resolution still at a cloud farm, in the first two cases you can get hanging buckets because there will be quite a lot of them relatively to the rendered area. So it's good to check how your scene is going to be rendered on a given farm before uploading a project. If you are not sure, it's better to use smaller buckets like default 48 pixels. It is common knowledge in computing sciences that computers store and process data as a power of two. For example, in computer games and also in general CG, the textures are set to values like 512 pixels or 1024 pixels to get better computing performance. The normal practice in setting buckets is the same. Usually bucket sizes are set to a power of 2 or to a value of 3 times power of 2. I will check if this is a really important factor in rendering. First, I will set the buckets to sizes which are not powers of 2, but very close, and compare the performance to buckets with sizes set as powers of 2. Here are the results of the tests. The blue pixel sizes in the middle are the bucket sizes which are set as the power of two and also in almost every case they gave the best rendering times. There are two exceptions where buckets that are not a power of two gave better rendering times but in both cases they were bigger so shorter rendering time was justified. In general the differences in rendering times are not very big but it looks like there is no reason to use bucket sizes which are not a power of two. Also in this test it's visible that bigger buckets in general gave shorter rendering times. By default VR buckets are set as squares, but you can uncheck this option and set them to a different width and height ratio. So now I'll run tests with non-square bucket sizes. The number of pixels in these buckets is the same, they have just different dimensions ratio. The test results show that keeping the buckets set at squares gives the best render times. The non-square buckets render the longer the more non-uniform is the ratio between width and height of the bucket. The RAM 
some usage is not affected though. So I think that rendering with non-square brackets can be useful only in some rare scenarios. For example, when you are rendering a region with non-uniform ratio, or for example, you need this kind of uh, buckets for some specific preview, or you want to solve a problem with hanging buckets. V-Ray offers a choice when it comes to the order in which the buckets are going to be rendered. I will talk over their advantages and disadvantages and run some tests to check their influence on render time and RAM usage. The first two are triangulation and Hilbert curve. Triangulation is the default V-Ray's bucket rendering sequence. The advantage of these two sequences is that they are optimized for speed. So in their case, the new buckets which start to render are close to the finished ones. So there is less need for unloading and loading additional data into the bucket every time. The disadvantage is that it's hard to use the partial image rendered with this sequences if rendering is interrupted. You really need to start rendering from scratch every time. Another two are top, bottom and left, right. The advantage is that they give you a possibility to cancel the render at some point, add some changes and then resume the rendering with a render region without having to start from scratch. After finished rendering, you can put together the rendered parts in a program like Photoshop. Left-right rendering sequence additionally gives you good rendering time estimate in most cases. For example, ArcBee's exteriors usually have sky, buildings and greenery parts composed as horizontal areas. So on every stage of rendering, the rendering time estimate is quite good. The next one is Spiral. Its advantage is that it is the only rendering sequence which starts from the center of the image. So it's good for previews and gives a quick look into the effect of the rendered image. The disadvantage is that during rendering, the rendered buckets slowly get far away from each other and they skip bigger distances in the rendered image. So they need to load the data more often and the render times may be slightly longer. And the last one is Checker. Its advantage is that it gives very close rendering time estimate. V-Ray calculates the estimate for the whole image basing on the time of already rendered packets. Checker pattern covers the whole image area when it achieves the middle time of rendering. At this point, the rendering time estimate is very close to the final rendering time and the smaller the buckets are the more precise is the estimate. The disadvantage is that the partial image rendered with this sequence is useless when rendering is interrupted. It also can give longer rendering times. You can also use mouse following as the rendering sequence so the buckets will follow the mouse arrow movement on the frame buffer. It's less efficient than other rendering sequences and also you can't use it on cloud render farms and when you render an animation. So it's only useful when you render a still image or run tests on your local computer. Now let's have a look at the results of tests of different bucket sequences. The triangulation and Hilbert curve proved to be the fastest in most cases. And in most cases, Spiral and Checker gave the longest rendering times. This is caused by the process of loading and unloading the data into the bucket, which I mentioned earlier. In case of the high resolution displacement scene, the top bottom sequence was the best. As you can see, it first rendered the empty upper part and then the displaced terrain part. So in this case, it had the least work with loading and unloading geometry. Also, checker performance was good for this scene. The checker method is basically top bottom sequence, which skips every other bucket. And the displaced terrain is a single object, which is stored in the static memory. So there was not much loading and unloading to do in this case. In case of the tree proxy scene, the checker was one of the longest, when the top bottom was also one of the fastest. I think that this is because the checker method in this case had to load and unload the tree proxies which were stored in dynamic memory more often and that caused that longer rendering time. I will summarize this part of the tutorial. It's better to use buckets set as a power of 2 or 3 times a power of 2 and with uniform width and height. 
because it results with better rendering times. When it comes to the bucket sequences, the triangulation and Hilbert curve proved to be the fastest. Other ones have their advantages, but were slower. In general, we can see that using the bigger buckets can cut on render times at the cost of RAM usage, but also the bigger are the buckets, the bigger is the chance of running into a hanging bucket problem, and it can generate very long render times. So big render buckets should be used in scenes which don't have parts which render much longer. So if you need to reduce the RAM usage or want to avoid hanging buckets issue, use smaller buckets. I will address this issue in the second part of this tutorial. As a render farm wrangler, I've seen this problem many times. Sometimes it costed the users time, sometimes money, but sometimes it would even make the rendering completely impossible. So I will look closer at this problem, check for the reasons and find and share solutions with you so you can get the shortest render times possible. See you in the second part. Thank you.